Welcome to Open Road Touring. We get lots of questions regarding our DC system, in particular the DC hot water system. I read somewhere that when you're sizing everything, sizing the battery and the solar panels and how much electricity you need and your inverter, you should put a lot of attention or put the most money into generating as much electricity as possible as opposed to storage. And most people when they're sizing their systems all talk about how many amp hours they've got in their battery and all that stuff. So I, I thought I'm going to follow that advice I read. I, I can't remember where I read it, but I put the most effort into generating electricity. So my solar panels only just fit on the roof. When I was designing the system, I realized when you camp, you often camp in the shade, and therefore you're not getting sun. And this is why people often put out portable solar panels. But then I realize is that the time I'm getting the most solar energy is when I'm driving, when I'm on the road. But when I'm driving on the road, I don't actually need solar energy because my DC to DC charger is topping up the battery. So I thought I should be diverting that solar energy into something like generating hot water. And I did quite a bit of research on the internet and there's a system called solar PV hot water that many people use in their off-grid systems. So I thought I'd build a similar sort of system to use in my camping truck. So when driving, to get the maximum solar energy, the DC to DC charger charges the battery, the MPPT controller switches over to the solar hot water system and the solar energy from the panels heats the hot water. The perfect situation. So when we arrive at camp at night, the battery is fully charged to power the fridge and we've got hot water for a shower. Here's the DC system. I have a 60 amp hour lithium battery. It was actually listed at 85 amp hour battery, but bought it on AliExpress and it's not really 85, it's probably 50 or 60 amp hours. I've got a 20 amp DC to DC charger and an EP EVA dual battery MPPT controller and the control panel. And you see I'm currently generating 378 watts. So when the battery is fully charged, I've got a solid state relay that switches over the solar panels and connects them directly to the solar hot water heater. In theory, it might be possible to connect the, the element from the hot water heater up to the battery, but I, I read that that's probably gonna kill your battery. So this way is there's no losses whatsoever. The trick is matching the resistance of the element in the hot water heater with the maximum power point of the solar panels. And after quite a bit of research that people have done generally for off-grid solar hot water, solar PV hot water systems, I came up with a formula that you get the voltage and the maximum power point for the solar panels, square that and divide it by the power. And then you come up with a resistance number and then you match that resistance number with the element of the hot water heater. My element is 48 volts, 1500 watts, which comes out to around two ohms. And two ohms is my perfect maximum power point of the solar panels. Currently getting around 360 watts, 31 volts at 11 amps. And if you square 32 and divide it by 366, you'll get around two ohms, which is the resistance of my element. The temperature sensor goes to the controller here. So when it gets to 39 degrees, it cuts out. When driving, we get the maximum solar energy the DC to DC charger charges the battery. The MPPT controller switches over to the solar hot water system and the solar energy from the panels heats the hot water. Perfect situation. So when we arrive at camp at night, the battery is fully charged to power the fridge and we've got hot water for a shower. I use the MPPT controller, which is an RV controller, has an AES signal. I use that AES signal to trigger the solid state relay. The AES signal is a five volt signal and when that comes on, it fires up the solid state relay and the solid state relay connects up the element directly to the solar panels. That five volt signal goes via the hot water temperature sensor to ensure that when it gets to 39, or I think I've got something like that, 39.4 degrees at the moment, it seems to be a good temperature. When it gets that temperature, it cuts off and therefore when we arrive at camp, we've got perfect hot water, perfect for showering and washing the dishes. By contrast, other hot water systems can get too hot, whereas this is perfect because it's very easy to cut off when it gets that temperature. I deliberately don't mix the hot water with cold water to get the right temperature, because the tank's insulated and therefore it will retain its temperature generally overnight. It's a little bit cool in the morning, but it's still fine for having a shower. 
And the advantage of having a separate hot water tank for showering is that I can pick up that water and I can fill it up from dirty water from a creek. Often in Australia where you can't, there's, there's rainwater which you shouldn't drink, but that's perfect water to be able to fill up into my tank for showers and for washing the dishes. I bought all of my equipment on eBay, Amazon and AliExpress. The solar panels are from Amazon. The solar controllers from AliExpress and a lot of the other parts tend to be on eBay because it tends to arrive a bit quicker in Australia at the moment. I find with 500 watts of power that it's ample to keep the battery topped up for running the fridge and the lights. I don't yet run an inverter. I figure it's better to have everything on 12 volts and the inverter is just going to require more battery capacity. But there's ample power from the solar panels to charge the, the battery. In fact, the the battery is normally charged by 10 o'clock in the morning. It only takes about a couple of hours to, to top it up from overnight from running the, the fridge on the, on the battery. And even when it's cloudy with 500 watts, I still get a good five amps out of the panels when it's cloudy. With 500 watts, I can get up to 30 amps into the battery. And 30 amps is certainly enough to heat the hot water. So the hot water warms within about two or two or three hours depending how much sun we've got which is certainly enough if we're driving during the day and parked and what's really good about this is if I'm parked for lunch I don't have to roll in any panels it's permanently on the roof and it's amazing how well it works I'm totally surprised that the work the system works so well I originally had a, a normal relay in the system a 30 amp relay thinking that would be enough but you've got to be careful when you're working with high current DC and simply burnt up that relay and it burned it closed which can be quite dangerous because if the contacts burn closed that means that the hot water heater is going to stay on and if I didn't attend to it the hot water heater could actually overheat and I don't have a, a pressure valve on it so the water would um could potentially boil which obviously you don't want. The fridge is a 50 litre ARB fridge and I tend to put it on around zero or one degrees it seems to be the best temperature to keep everything nice and cold see the solar panels coming up the top there with an Anderson plug there's a red light that I use which is a water temperature light truck water temperature light and that hot water temperature light tells me the hot water element is on we've got other switches for lights up in the tent the MPPT controller is a EP EVA duo and it has a temperature sensor for lead acid batteries that I don't use for the lithium battery but I use that temperature sensor to remotely monitor the temperature of the tank it's really useful because when I'm driving in the truck, I can monitor how my temperature is increasing from the truck using the app. And on the left there is the, the e-box, which is the Bluetooth interface. Hopefully I've covered the system enough that people can build their own. But if you've got any more questions about how to run your own solar PV hot water system, pop them in the comments below and I'll see if I can answer them for you. Like and subscribe and thanks for watching Open Road Touring.